Check. Check it. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. This morning we're going to add another song to our worship repertoire. Repertoire is a French word, which means the catalog of music that we know. This is We Fall Down by Chris Tomlin. It's not a very difficult song, but it's a really prayerful song. We're adding it as our second communion song today, so the second song at communion time. Um, and we really love it because the message of it is about humbling ourselves at the feet of Christ and of putting the things that we value of this world, whatever those things are, down at his feet and honoring the fact that he is greater than we are. And so I think it's a perfect time at reflection after communion for this particular song. So we're going to teach this to you this morning and then we're going to sing it here um, as people are walking in a little bit and then we'll sing it at communion. So the first line, I'm going to sing, and then um, we'll sing back. It goes like this. We fall down, we lay our crowns at the feet of Jesus. So let's do just that. One, two, ready, go. We fall down, we lay Next line is same notes, different words. One, two, three, four. The greatness of mercy and love at the feet of Jesus. Good. Let's sing just that part. The greatness of sing these ancient words. They have been with us since the beginning of our church and far before that. We cry, holy, holy, holy. And we sing it three times in a row. It sounds like this. And we cry, holy, holy, holy. And we cry, holy, holy, holy. And we cry, from the beginning. Here we go. We fall down, we lay our ground at the feet of Jesus. The greatness of mercy and love at the feet of Jesus. And we cry, holy, holy, new songs for uh, communion. This will be our second communion song today. We'll sing it one more time here before we get started.
we'll be singing that again after um, the first song for communion. Thank you so much for learning that with us today. Good morning, holy people. Welcome to St. John Paul II on the 13th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Good to have you all with us. Want to welcome anybody who's visiting or here for the first time. We will start over here in this section. Any visitors over here? Just raise. Oh, the Dinezes are back. Good to have you guys back. They moved up to Fort Wayne a little while back. We're going to give them a blessing, but I think you guys got away before we had an opportunity to do that. So uh, we do wish you well in your uh, new home up there. And uh, glad you could make it back this weekend. Any other guests in this section? Anybody? What about over here in these sections here? Met a family from Madison. Good to have you with us. Um, what about the last two sections? Any guests over here? Let's welcome those that are here, the guests that are here. Thank you. I'm going to ask for one more week on the Eucharistic Congress to get the registration going for that. Uh, the, the problems that we're finding is the diocese is giving a $100, a $99 discount. The regular ticket is $375, the, the uh, $101 discount, or no, $176 by the diocese uh, if you use that code. But we want to give a $100 discount as well from the parish uh, in order to encourage people to go. So putting all that together, we've got to figure out how to do that. So we think we got the plan ready to unveil this week and should know more by next weekend. They still need help on Sunday mornings. On the second and third Sundays, uh, we help out at the community kitchen, a soup kitchen in Jeffersonville, uh, serving uh, those who, who need food assistance uh, and providing a meal for them. Uh, so those who would normally attend 11:15 Mass, you'd be on the early shift, so it'd be getting up uh, early, uh, going down there and meeting uh, them, preparing the food, and then the people from the 8:30 Mass will come and they'll serve it after the 8:30 Mass. So. Uh, so it's a kind of a two-shift thing. So if you're able to do that, uh, contact, uh, the contact information is in the bulletin. Join us after Mass for coffee and donuts. Uh, and we will have prayer ministry after Mass. So if you have any prayer needs, come up and see our prayer minister. And he or she will pray, she will pray with you. Uh, Kathy will pray with you. Uh, and at this time, I invite you to find a prayer partner by introducing yourself to one other person and then praying for that person throughout this Mass. Thank you for doing that. And now we just invite you to take a moment and quiet yourself as we prepare to celebrate our liturgy this morning. All peoples, clap your hands. Sing to God with shouts of joy. Good morning. Welcome once again to St. John Paul II. Please stand as we sing together our opening song, All Are Welcome.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Good Once again, welcome to all of you and thank you for choosing our community to worship God with us. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so we ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You are sent to heal the contract of heart, Lord of mercy. Lord you came to call sinners, Christ of mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May the Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. of our young people for children in the of the world. This is open for children from kindergarten to grade five. Let us pray. 
O God, who through the grace of adoption chose us to be children of light, grant, we pray, that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Come, O children, come, come and hear the word of God. Come, O children, come, come and learn the word of God. Come, O children, come, come and love the word of God. Glorify Him, glorify Him, and love the word of God. A reading from the second book of Kings. One day Elijah came to Shunem, where there was a woman of influence who urged him to dine with her. Afterward, whenever he passed by, he used to stop there and dine. So she said to her husband, I know that Elijah is a holy man of God. Since he visits often, let us arrange a little room on the roof and furnish it for him with a bed table, chair, and lamp, so that when he comes to us, he can stay there. Sometime later, Elijah arrived and stayed in the room overnight. Later, Elijah asked, can something be done for her? His servant Gehazi answered, yes. She has no son, and her husband is getting on in years. Elijah said, call her. When the woman had been called and stood at the door, Elijah promised, this time next year, you will be fondling a baby son. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all. As to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourselves as dead to sin and living for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his apostles, whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up his cross and follow after me, it's not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Whoever receives you, receives me. And whoever receives me, receives the one who sent me. Whoever receives a prophet, because he is a prophet, will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever receives a righteous man, because he is a righteous man, will receive a righteous man's reward. And whoever gives only a cup of cold water, water to one of these little ones to drink, because the little one is a disciple, amen, I say to you he will surely not lose his reward. The Gospel of the Lord. Let us take a quiet moment of prayer for our prayer partner.
Thank you. The readings for this 13th Sunday in Ordinary Time gives us the opportunity to talk about generosity and hospitality and mission. Generosity and hospitality do not define themselves by doing great things. Most of the time, a simple thing, a simple smile, a simple hug, a simple cup of water given with love can be a great proof of generosity and uh, hospitality. In my Haitian culture, we have a saying, voisinage c'est famille. That means literally in English, your neighbor is your family. We often say that a generous person, one who loves sharing with others, will never go without. The one who shares his food with others will never be hungry. That means he will always have food at home. In Haiti, we do not need to have a lot of food to share with our neighbors, with our friends, or with the stranger. Even though what we have may not seem to be enough for our own need, we still share it with others. And then when we find ourselves in need, someone will be there to share with us. In the first reading today, we have the prophet Elijah who comes to a woman at Shunem. She and her husband show him hospitality with great generosity. They do not have any child yet, but because of their hospitality, they will be rewarded and blessed by the prophet, and they will have a child the next year at the same time. This reading reminds us also of the story of the widow of Zarephath, who in a season of drought fed Elijah with the very last of the flour in a jar and the very last of her oil in a jug. It was the only food that she had, maybe not even enough for her son and herself. But she baked first a cake for Elijah. Because of her generosity, God blessed her with abundant food for the jar of flour did not go empty, nor the jug of oil went dry, according to the word of the Lord spoken through Elijah. The Bible talks a lot about the blessing or the reward we receive from our generosity and our hospitality. Indeed, we read this in the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Consider this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each must do as already determined, without sadness or compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Moreover, God is able to make every grace abundant for you, so that in all things, always having all you need, you may have an abundance for every good work. And in today's gospel, Jesus talks about hospitality to his disciples he sent to mission. He said to them, whoever receives you, receives me. And whoever receives me, receives the one who sent me. 
in the Old Testament, a prophet represented God. And in the New Testament, Jesus chose and sent his disciples to mission by instructing them to not take anything for the journey, neither walking stake, nor a sack, nor food, nor money, and let no one take a second tunic. And he said to them, whatever house you enter, stay there and live from there. So then, when you receive a prophet or a disciple of Christ, you receive God himself and God will reward you. Brothers and sisters, let us show hospitality to those who are dedicated their lives to serve God. Let us encourage our missionaries, our religious sisters and brothers, our deacons and priests, our bishops, our pope, and the many lay ministers who have left everything to serve in the mission field. The mission is not easy, but our hospitality and generosity can make a big difference in their mission. St. Peter reminds us, show hospitality to one another without grumbling. And the author of the book of Hebrews says, let mutual love continue do not neglect hospitality, for through it, some have unknowingly entertained angels. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and visible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before the Jesus, God from God, light from light, to God from true God, begotten not made, consistent so with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was in kind of a virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified in the Pontius of Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, and upon the truth of scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will not have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is already glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With confidence, let us place our petition of prayers before our God. For the church, that all Christians will celebrate our faith with vibrancy and joy, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our nation and our world, that the Holy Spirit will help us to end all forms of injustice, prejudice, violence, and suffering. We pray to the Lord. Lord, your prayer. For all the deployed soldiers throughout the world, 
that they will successively fight for freedom and that God will bring them home safely. We pray to the Lord. Lord, your prayer. For the sick, the homeless, those in need of healing, and those who are preparing to enter their heavenly home, that the peace of Christ will be with them in this hour. We pray to the Lord. Lord, your prayer. For all who have died, that they may rest in the arms of our loving God, we especially remember Louis Shane Jr., the father of our parishioner, Kevin Shishane. We pray to the Lord. Lord, your prayer. For Patricia Robo and Chris Mikowski, who are the intentions of this Mass, we pray to the Lord. Lord, your prayer. For our individual prayer request, those of our prayer partners at this Mass, and all that are written in our prayer books. Through the intercession of St. John Paul II and all the saints, we pray to the Lord. God, your prayer. Loving and gracious God, hear the prayers we present to you today and those that mean our hearts. Grant what find good in them through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we prepare for the celebration of the Eucharist, all are welcome to bring forward any gifts to the local food pantry or personal offerings. And please join us in our song for the preparation of gifts, the summons. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who graciously accomplish the effects of your mysteries, 
grant, we pray, that the deeds by which we serve you may be worthy of these sacred gifts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you holy people he stretched out his hands as he endures his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare our glory as with one voice we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the Father of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like a dewfall, so that they may become fast the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that we have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray 
that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring out the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Charles, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed pastors and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may be to be caressed within a life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through wait and wait and O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the severe's command and found by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we with the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to the pastors, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy. It's going to matter. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
the last way. May this divine sacrifice we have offered and received fill us with life, O oh Lord, we pray, so that bound to you in lasting charity, we may bear fruit that lasts forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks. Thank you all. Have a good and blessed week. Thank you. Please join with us in our, um, in our sending forth song, Go Make a Difference.